Hi everyone, I hope you are all well. It's another week um, <laughs> since I, I did my last review, that is really crazy. I've been off work this week and I'm off work next week as well. It's uh, my two weeks break from work, thank goodness, because I've only had two days off so far this year, um, but before the beginning of this week of course. Um, and so it's been absolutely lovely to have a break and catch up and just just to have some time for me it's been lovely but what has made it so so great is the fact that now in the UK because of social bubbles for um single adult families or um a single parents with children that they're able to um interact with one other household it's meant that I could spend the most of the week with my mum I've been going each day either she's been coming to my house or I've been going to hers um and spend the day with my mum and then when the evening comes and my dad's gotten home from work I've been able to see him as well each day which has been lovely uh on Friday I turned 34 so yay another birthday and weirdly on Saturday aka yesterday um I got uh I got stopped at a supermarket buying alcohol because I looked underage and had no ID with me to prove my age because I didn't think I've never been stopped for alcohol before so I didn't think about it and so I had to hand over the alcohol and leave it there and weirdly it was port as well ruby port for cooking and I was like would an underage person really want to be getting their hands on port I don't know but there we go um <laughs> so that, that, that was fun um I got a couple of books for my birthday which I got from my absolutely wonderful sister came through the post so I just want to show you which ones they were so the first one is Lord of Shadows by Cassandra Clare I recently read um that this is the dark artifices i've read the first book earlier this year and this is book two um so this says emma carstairs has finally avenged her parents she thought she'd be at peace but she's anything but calm torn between her desire for a peribatai julian and her desire to protect him from the brutal consequences of peribatai relationships she has begun dating his brother mark but mark has spent the past five years trapped in fairy can he even truly be a shadow hunter again and the fairy courts are not silent. The unseelie king is tired of the cold peace and will no longer concede to the shadow hunter demands. Caught between the demands of fairy and the laws of the clave, Emma, Julian and Mark must find a way to come together to defend everything they hold dear before it's too late. Yeah, so that is the second Dark Artifices book by Cassandra Clare and I'm quite intrigued by this. I especially love the artwork because <laughs> I get that's Julian. But you have like a city scape oh, that's london but it's london bridge but if you tilt it inside you can see it better um it's on the side so why is he positioned like that or there's her covers are absolutely brilliant and there's a lot more in it once you understand the the, the explanation behind it kind of thing so yeah so the first one was lord of shadows and the second one is scythe by neil neil Sust susterman uh so this is a book that my sister has read earlier this year well maybe about about a month ago i think um and she absolutely loved it and i think this is one of the series as well so this is the first book uh, and it says thou shalt kill what if death was the only thing left to control in a perfect world the only way to die is to be gleaned by a professional scythe with citra and rowan uh, choose chosen to be apprentice scythes they know that they have no option but to learn the art of killing However, the terrifying responsibility of choosing their victims is just the start. Corruption is the order of the day and Citra and Rowan need to stick together to fight it. But then they are told that one of them will have to glean the other. And my sister absolutely loved this, uh, said it was amazing. I'm pretty sure she got like a box set. So I don't know if it's two books or three books. I just know that it's one of multiple books. Um, but yeah. I'm quite intrigued by it so thank you Laura for my birthday books and hopefully guys um, when we're able to get together again because of the coronavirus we have got loads of videos um, lined up that we're going to make for you guys so she is going to be back as soon as possible but we have to wait for the government to confirm when that will be possible so yeah fingers crossed so anyway Let's move on to the reason why we're here. Let's get away from birthday presents, holiday, and me 
being uh, prevented from buying alcohol because I looked underage. That actually did make me feel good, but then I was really annoyed because I couldn't buy the stuff that I needed to make some nice spaghetti. But there we go. Um, <laughs> I'm here to talk about the book I've been reading this week, which is Girl with a Pearl Earring uh, by Tracy Chevalier. Now, this is the first of her books that I've ever read, so I had no idea what I was going into. I did see her at a festival event a Cheltenham Festival event a few years ago and she turned, you know, she came across very nice but then she, it was all about Jane Eyre and a collection of short stories that she had compiled together by other authors and um, th yeah, she then right near the end of the session completely ripped Jane apart and basically called her a gold digger really or at least that's that's how she came across to me i was a bit like oh my god did we read the same book um so it was a bit like right um <laughs> but that's the only interaction with tracy i've ever i've ever come across before basically um so i didn't know what to expect from this overall i'd have to say I really enjoyed it. I've actually said to my mum that I really think that this would be something that she would be interested in reading. Now, Girl with the Pearl Earring is is here, the 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 painting by Vermeer, a very famous painting. It's my favourite painting ever. I love this painting so much. Um, and it's a painting that's always intrigued historians as to who was the girl, why he captured that pose, why is she looking at you? You know, trying to answer all these questions. And Vermeer very much had um, all of his paintings were kind of two rooms of his house. They were always the same people, the same um, costume, you know, that kind of thing. Same props. But she is completely different. She is a different face. She is done on a completely black background. So there's no furniture. There's no rooms. That, and she just had had gaze. It's piercing um and i love her so the it basically tracy wrote a story behind the making of the painting with vermeer um as a character his wife uh his mother-in-law his kids and the girl and in this case the girl is a girl called greet uh she has been employed as a maid to uh be a part of his his household after her father was uh, blinded in a horrific accident uh, at the tiling uh, place where he he worked for many many years. Uh, Vermeer was like on the board of governors or something for um, that organisation or the insurance. The guild is what he's referred to as. Um, and yeah, he was on the board in order to help out this this man uh the, who had who had you know gone through this horrific thing Vermeer turned up at his house and interviewed his daughter Greet who's 16 years old and she's employed to be a maid but in the course of the book uh it uh, it turns out that Greet is able to understand his art very clearly she she's able to enter this world of mystery and magic um which his wife isn't able to. She doesn't understand it. Nobody else in the household understands it. But this random girl who enters, who just gets it. And she and Vermeer um, develop this friendship. And it's all about this relationship and what caused this painting to be made. As I said, in reality, she's a complete mystery. We don't know anything about her. So this is entirely fictionalized. Apart from little things, obviously, the wife, the children, the fact he was part of the guild, his paintings, his associate, you know, that kind of thing. So people and some facts obviously are real, but the rest of it is completely fictional. It reads so easy, like really easy read. I got, I've basically gotten through this in about two days. <laughs> uh, I mean, I've been, I, I've been um, reading bits and bolts, but I spent, you know, bulk of, yesterday slash this morning finishing it off um but yeah so across two days i would say i've, got, I've gotten through it there's nothing too heavy about it um there's not a lot of you know how i said about international uh, locations and such and names and all that lot there's nothing that's too um hard to figure out what how to pronounce names or places and such and very few are actually referred to because it's a set 
uh, number of, of, of characters is the household. Um, you have uh, the, the benefactor, Van Riken. Uh, you've got the butcher and his son, who Peter the father, Peter the son, as they're referred to, and Greet's parents, a uh, family, and that's it. There's no other, <laughs> there's no other players in this. So you're very in this stripped back, as it were, um, number of characters, and you've only got what three locations? So you've got Vermeer's house, Greet's house and the the meat market and that is it <laughs> so you you again you're completely stripped back and it's very simply written but i think it is that thing that there there's there's a lot of information but not a lot of words it's more of tones of voices when things are said there is the, because it's written for first person perspective of Greet, there's the thoughts that she processes, not necessarily the words that she says. Um, it's It's got a punch to it, but it's quite, it, it's quite elegant. Okay, um, <laughs> I'm trying to think how, how best to describe it. I think actually Jesse Burton said very well. Um, Tense yet perfectly paced and filled with the beauty of life's colours. That's that, you know, it has this, because you talk, she talks about these vibrant colours and I love the way that she describes the yellows, the blues and such. So it has this vivacious um, way of describing the world, yet it's quite mellow. <laughs> this this massive eyes, but it's you know, but it takes its time. It, you know, goes down the road. It does span about two years. This book, um, so there is a lot going along, uh, going on with the characters, and there is a lot of things of behind closed doors. There are things that you are not allowed to see, but you learn about things. Um, it very much put me in the mind of the miniaturist by Jesse Burton, who's that that quote is from. Um, so, and given that this is the twentieth anniversary, so Jesse Burton was inspired by Girl with the Pearl Earring. Um, <laughs> to I, I gather um, as one of um, I suppose many inspiration things, um, but for structuring, for tone, because I loved the tone of this book. Um, the characters and such, the pace of the story, the way that she that she describes levels of society very clear, yet it's very natural. I thought it was all fabulous. Uh, little things irked me, like for example, what I just what I mentioned before. We have the butcher and his son, and they're both called Peter, so she has to constantly refer to them as. Peter the father or Peter the son all the time <laughs> and it's just a bit like why don't you just call them two separate names just uh, you know we can I mean you do have that thing that male um, sons tend to be named after their fathers uh, and everything at that time anyway and that tradition does still continue but not as not as much today um, but could they could he have had an older brother who was called Peter and then you had a completely separate name for the son and then that way you didn't have to keep on saying Peter the father, Peter the son. Um, you know, it 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 just was it was just it was just a bit annoying to me. Um I think also that there were one or two moments where I was a bit like would you react that way? If someone had done what they did to you um, or just someone you knew, would you have done that? And I'm not criticising that the choices of what the characters did was wrong. Not criticising at all, but I was just a bit like, at times I was a little bit like, really? Really? Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's her book. She can do whatever she wants, what have her characters do. Um, but yeah, I, I really, really hated a certain character, but you're meant to hate them. So it was, you know, a little, a little girl, a little spoiled brat who 
tries to destroy everything um, for greed. Uh, but, you know, that means that Tracy has done her job well. And that was the only character who, well, no, strike that. I was going to say that's the only character I really hated, but then I really did hate Van Riefen as well, which but that's, again, because you're meant to. Um, so Tracy did well with that. But, I mean, disliked the way that they were constructed or, the, you know, things about their... Um, things about the, them in general uh, that I didn't like the way that she was writing them, that I didn't have that issue throughout. I think it's a, it's a really good, re if you want to read a good historical fiction that's not too heavy, that's easy to read, um, it's got a really interesting subject, it's quite complex yet simple, good pacing, vivid writing, I think that this is a good book for you. Um, yeah, and it might inspire, <laughs> like I said, uh, a possible uh, a possible writer. Um, I would definitely, yeah, read more of this. I just want to do a, a quick reading for you, just to give an example of Greet and Vermeer's relationship. And this is her trying to understand how you create a painting. So she says, I've never seen a painting made from the beginning. I thought that you painted what you saw using the colours that you saw, he taught me. He began the painting of the baker's daughter with a layer of pale grey on white canvas. Then he made reddish brown marks all over it to indicate where the girl in the table and a pitcher and water and map would go. After that, I thought he would begin to paint what he saw, a girl's face, a blue skirt, a yellow and black bodice, a brown map, a silver pitcher and basin, a white wall. Instead, he painted patches of colour, black where her skirt would be, ochre for the bodice and the map on the wall, red f and, and sorry, ochre for the bodice and the map on the wall, red for the picture and the basin it sat in, another grey for the wall. They were the wrong colours. None was the colour of the thing itself. He spent a long time on these false colours, as I called them. Sometimes the girl came and spent half an hour standing in place, yet when I looked at the painting the next day, nothing had been added or taken away. There were just areas of colours that did not make things, no matter how long I studied them. I only knew that they were meant to be because I cleaned the objects myself and had seen that the girl was wearing what seen what the girl was wearing when I peeked at her one day as she changed into Katharina's yellow and black bodice in the Great Hall. I reluctantly set out the colours he asked for each morning. One day I put on a blue as well. The second time I laid it out, he said to me, no ultramarine greet, only the colours I asked for. Why did you set it out when I did not ask for it? He was annoyed. I'm sorry, sir, it's just... I took a deep breath. She's wearing a blue skirt. I thought you would want it rather than leaving it black. When I am ready, I will ask. I nodded and turned back to polishing the lion-headed chair. My chest hurt. I did not want him to be angry at me. He opened the middle window, filling the room with cold air. Come here, Greet. I set my rag on the sill and went to him. Look out the window. I looked out. It was a breezy day with clouds disappearing behind the, church, the new church tower. What colour are the clouds? Why, white, sir. He raised his eyebrows slightly. Are they? I glanced at them. And grey. Perhaps it will snow. Come, Greet, you can do better than that. Think of your vegetables. My vegetables, sir? He moved his head slightly. I was annoying him again. My jaw tightened. Think of how you separate the whites, your turnips and your onions. Are they the same white? Suddenly I understood. No, the turnip has green in it, the onion yellow. Exactly. Now, what colour do you see in the clouds? There's some blue in them, Estelle said after studying them for a few minutes, and yellow as well. And there's some green. I became so excited I actually pointed. I've been looking at clouds all my life, but I felt as if I saw them for the first time in a moment. He smiled. You will find that you will find there is little pure white in clouds, yet people say they are white. Now do you understand why I do not need the blue yet? Yes, sir. 
I did not really understand, but I did not want to admit it. I felt I almost knew. When at last he began to add the colours on top of the false colours, I saw what he meant. He painted a light blue over the girl's skirt and it became a blue through which bits of black could be seen, darker in shadow of the table, lighter closer to the window. To the wall areas he added yellow ochre through which some of the grey showed. It became a, a bright but not a white wall. When the light shone on the wall I discovered it was not white but many colours. The pitcher and basin were the most complicated. They became yellow and brown and green and blue. They reflected the pattern of the rug, the girl's bodice, the blue cloth draped over the chair, everything but their true silver colour. And yet they looked as they should, like a pitcher and a basin. And after that, I could not stop looking at things. So there we go. So that's Greet really starting to understand Vermeer's world and seeing things in a different way than she has ever seen things before. Uh, and yeah, it's that they're developing um, understanding of each other, understanding of the rules of the world, uh, the real world and his world in, in the arts, um, the strict order of hierarchy within the house, within society. Uh, and yeah, and the building up of pressures of stuff of strained relationships in the house and outside the house. And yeah, I enjoyed it. So would I read this again? Yes, I would. Um, I think I would like to give it a bit of time and then go back to it um, read a few other things. Uh, yeah, and see see what I think. But I was I was impressed with it. Would I read more of Tracy's work? I think I'd look up some more stuff. Yeah, as, as a first book of, of hers to read, it was very, very good. I enjoyed it. I don't know uh, where number wise, <laughs> how many of her books that she had published before Girl with the Pearl Earring. Um, but yeah, I don't know her full range of books, but I, I'll certainly I'll certainly have a look into that. Um, would I recommend this to, to anyone? Yes, I certainly would. And I'm actually going to lend it to my mum. Uh, we were talking about it earlier today because uh, we watched the film on my birthday, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. Uh, and uh, she hadn't seen it for like forever on a day and she'd forgotten things about it and enjoyed it. Uh, and so since I had finished the book when I was at her house earlier today, um, uh, I was like, once you finish reading the books on your to read list, let me know and I'll lend this to you. So yeah, I definitely would uh, recommend it. So yeah, the film, Go With The Pearl Earring. I don't own a copy of the DVD, I thought I did, uh, and it's not available on Netflix, but my mum owned a copy and so she lent it to me. Um, and yeah, so Go With The Pearl Earring, as you can see, the Scarlett Johansson as the girl, uh, greet in, in her pearl earring and everything. Uh, so it stars Scarlett Johansson, uh, and Colin Firth as Vermeer and Greet and overall it, it is a good adaptation it captures the tone of the book perfectly I think uh, the pace of it and such they have moved things around they have deeply deeply reduced uh, the amount of time Greet and Peter, the the, the son, the butcher's son, uh, their relationship is reduced to about three scenes. And I'm like, that's really weird because it, it, their relationship really develops a lot throughout the book. Um, they cut out various things, um, which I was, I'm was i a little irked by now that I've read the book. But overall, it captures the essence, the beauty, the tone um the silent moments from the book very well i think and is definitely worth watching uh you don't have to have read the book to watch the film of course um but you know sometimes you have that where i've spoken before where things just will not make sense unless you've read the book and understand it um that's not the case for this it's just a bit that like i said peter and her relationship just doesn't really develop in the film and then for the various a scene that happens um outside a tavern which i won't explain because spoilers but if you know that if you watch the film you know what i mean for that then to happen i was a bit like 
would she do that? <laughs> um, but because I know the book version of their relationship and how it takes two years to develop and they and they have like Sunday lunch with each other every week throughout it was just like to go to have that have and have and have them only have like two maybe three scenes prior to that it was just a bit like okay that's quick um <laughs> so yeah um so apart from some irks it's still a really decent adaptation and definitely worth a watch so give it a go so right guys i'm going to stop there um have you read this book i'd love to know what you think leave me a comment in the comments box below give me a thumbs up thumbs down entirely up to you i'll let you decide uh and i'll be back with my thoughts on the last uh of the books that i've announced that i'm reading which is fried green tomatoes at the whistle stop cafe it is more of a chunkier book so i might not get it to a review to you by next weekend but i will do my best um and yeah we'll just we'll see how we go um but yeah I, uh, I hope you guys are all okay and, uh, you know, surviving through coronavirus. Hopefully they're going to have more of um, a relaxing of the rules and such uh, be announced soon. Um, we'll uh, just have to see. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys are all doing well. Some people have been commenting, you know, saying um, on Facebook and also, and also directly to me and such here saying how they've been having issues with reading as such during coronavirus and everything and i'm happy to do a video or whatever you'd like if you'd like me to do a video or um talking about it and such or um if you just want to contact me just want to have a chat just do please <laughs> i'm happy to i'm here to talk okay i'm happy to help um uh, but yeah I will stop babbling now um, and I will see you guys uh, when I see you and hopefully I'll be able to buy Ruby Port again. <laughs> All right, guys. Bye.